The Kansas Jayhawks are the last team that we are going to discuss here. And anybody that has watched this show for any length of time should know that I am a huge Lance Leipold fan. When he was at Buffalo, I thought it was genius, the direction that they went. You hire somebody from a lower level that understands how to win somewhere that it's kind of difficult to win. And the way that you do that is you establish a culture. And you kind of saw that last year with Kansas in 2021. Towards the end of the season, they got the win over Texas, and then they had some really close calls. But Kansas is not used to being in close calls, right? Every now and then they're going to sneak up on somebody and whatnot. But they they were a fun team last season. Their numbers overall on the season were not great. There's a lot of red on that screen if you're looking at it on YouTube. If you're listening on the podcast, you can go check out all of the... There's a link in the description, by the way, that will pull up this spreadsheet for you guys if you want to see it. So go ahead and check that out. But um, number 103 in offensive PPA per drive, number 130 in defensive PPA per drive. That's predicted points added per drive. Uh, it's basically efficiency and explosiveness and success rate kind of all wrapped up into one. Uh, they were, I mean, just about as bad as you could get as far as success rate on defense last year. Number 129 in rushing success rate allowed. Number 130 in passing success rate allowed. There were only 130 FBS teams. It does not get worse than that. Now, the PPA margin was pretty bad, number 127. Net points per drive, number 127. Total plays per game, they played at a slower pace, number 109. Uh, yeah, let's let's start off with the offense. You've got 81% of your offense coming back. On defense, you got 82% coming back. Overall, you have 81% of your team's production coming back. That's number six in the country. That is really, really good. Now, the roster strength ain't great. It ain't great at all. You went 2-10 and 10 last year. Post-game win expectancy, by the way, 2.61 and 9.39. So they were closer to three wins than they were to two, even though they ended the year on the scoreboard with two wins and 10 losses. Uh, their projected SP Plus record this year is 3-9. and nine. Starting on offense, the OC, Andy Kotelnicki. Probably said that wrong. My apologies if so. Uh, he was with Leipold at Buffalo for seven years. At the quarterback, Jalen Daniels, he basically, I mean, he he took over last year. Like He established himself as the quarterback. Uh, he returns with the running back, Devin Neal, and wide receivers, Rils, uh, Wilson, Arnold, Grimm, and the tight end, Fairchild. There's talent on offensive line. You got a couple of guys, uh, the center, Nowitzki, the left tackle, Bostic, that could be all-conference guys. Like, really, really good offensive line pieces. Uh, they ran nearly 58% of their plays last year on offense. Like, they had tons of rushing are they going to continue to do this? Because, and the only reason I mention that, they were number 54 in passing PPA last year, but only number 96 in rushing PPA. So it doesn't make a ton of sense to keep doing the thing that you're bad at and not doing as much of the thing that you're good at. Because it, uh, you, you know the ratio here. 58% rushes means only 42% passing. Why would you not flip that? Not trust Leipold to be able to figure it out, but... At, regardless, you were better at passing the ball last year than you were at running. Why did you run it so much? On defense, the defense coordinator, Brian Borland, he wants to have more havoc this season. They were number 130 in havoc rate last year, and he says that they have schemed for more disruptive plays. Well, they certainly need it. Uh, pretty much anything is going to be better. I've already mentioned how bad the numbers were, uh, but Leipold mentioned that the defense has added weight and they've gotten more comfortable with schemes. He mentioned that after spring practice this year. Like, it's a huge talent overhaul on defense. Uh, as far as roster strength, the offense is number 105. Defense is number 51. I mean, these transfers really made a huge difference as far as their overall numbers. Uh, you, seven transfers could all end up playing a lot. Like, I'm expecting pretty big improvement numbers this year, which shouldn't be too hard to do considering they were almost dead last in everything. But uh, regardless, this team is only projected to be favored in two games this year, which uh, is kind of shocking, really, uh, even the fact that they are projected to be favored in two games. They've got one game that is expected to be a toss-up, and that is a game that would be within uh, eight points. So, keys to the season before we get to the actual schedule here. Uh, last three games of 2021 kind of showed the real organic growth for this team. They upset Texas and Austin. They lost 31-28 to to TCU. They lost to West Virginia, 34-28. to Like, culture is building, and it's pretty prevalent 
here. I, I think you're going to see a completely different team come out this year, a team that, that won't beat themselves. And they didn't really beat themselves last year. You got a lot of returning production, which I mentioned. Uh, it's normally when Leipold has his best seasons is when he has a bunch of guys coming back. You, you actually got to go through spring practice with this coaching staff. You did not get to do that last year. So that's kind of a big deal. They, they had the fundamentals down. Absolutely down. They were number one in penalty yards per game. They were number three in penalties per game. Number 41 in turnover margin. At basically 47 in takeaways and 48 in giveaways. Like, I'm curious to see the growth this year. I've got them going three and nine. The win total is two and a half. It's heavily juiced to the over at minus 135. Uh, if you wanted to go under that two and a half, it'd be plus 105. So, you know, positive odds there. Look, you got, I don't think you're going to beat West Virginia or Houston in weeks two and three on the road. But do you beat Tennessee Tech? Yeah, I think so. Do you beat Duke in the first month with the new coach, Mike Elko? Yeah, I think so, especially at home. I've got them winning at Texas Tech because I I expect them to beat somebody. Would it surprise me if they beat Iowa State in Week 5? No. Uh, Would it surprise me if they beat uh, Kansas State? No, not really. Would it surprise me if they beat TCU? Somebody like No. I think there's a few spots here where they could win games. Do I think that they're going to win a lot? No, not yet. They still got a lot of roster building to do. But I do think that Kansas can be a, a force to, to reckon with. If you mess around with them and you don't show up for a game, you think you can just walk into the stadium against the Lance Leipold team, yeah, they can beat you. And they probably will because they're not going to beat themselves. Like his, his units are always incredibly well coached. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.